Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Friends, we gather here today with one another and with God to give thanks for Harry, to celebrate his life and to know that this is a day when you will come with your own particular memory of Harry and also the memories that so many people share. You may think of him, of course, at school. You may think of him early on uh, when he was choosing a church when he was growing up based on whether or not they had a good cricket club. You may think of him as a happy chap, unless, of course, Oldham lost. Or you may think of him as people put in some of their cards and letters as someone who was just lovely. But today we celebrate Harry's life and we remember all that he is and the touch that he leaves on so many. So our first hymn, I want you to note, it comes with direction. So the hymn is, of course, Abide With Me, but it is to be sung not just with passion, but with passion, so you have to imagine that you're at Wembley. So let it out with passion, Abide With Me.
difícil. Our dad, Harry Tabner, was born in 1938 in Manchester to parents Thomas and Eva Tabner, followed by his brother Graham. Dad grew up in Middleton in Manchester with a brief early spell in Cleveland during the worst of the bombing when he stayed with aunts in, at the boarding house they ran. At the age of 11, he went to Queen Elizabeth's Grammar School where he was school head boy, member of the first 11 in soccer and cricket, allegedly runner-up swimming champion. I, I think I made that one up for me. Um, <laughs> and perhaps less surprisingly, he was twice the winner of the annual Debating Society Prize. He learned car mechanics at uh, an early age from his uncle Bill, knowledge which he found useful and enjoyable throughout his life, and he was always tinkering with engines and servicing his cars. He got really frustrated when the uh, way modern cars were built made it was largely impossible to service cars at home, but on the positive side, it completely vindicated my decision never to pay any attention at all on the umpteen times he tried to teach me how to service a car engine. Um, Dad graduated from Sheffield University with an honours degree in English and French with Latin, and in his first year there, he'd met a fellow student from Onken, Pamela Scarf, in the queue for week the weekly lecture for those who were excused Latin because of their good A-level grades. So as a result of meeting Mum, he spent his summer holidays uh, working on the Isle of Man in a range of tourism-related jobs, uh, from developing photos to tram driving. And he was fond of saying that horse tram driving actually paid more than his first teaching job did. Uh, Mum and Dad were married in St. Peter's in Onkin in 1960, a marriage which lasted for 52 very happy years. Dad said Mum was actually one of the few people who could ever shut him up, albeit only occasionally. They both began their teaching careers in Abbeydale Grammar Schools in Sheffield. Then the three of us arrived and dis disrupted Mum's career. And while Dad moved to Stratford Grammar School, then er Ernston Grammar School as head of English, then moved to New Mill School as head of English and also a member of the steering group which was charged with converting grammar and secondary schools uh, into one comprehensive. And he learned a lot about school management in that process. In 1971, we moved to the Isle of Man uh, as Dad was appointed deputy head at Douglas High School for Boys, where he experienced his second major reorganization as the school became a senior mixed establishment. In 1976, he was appointed head of Castle Russian High School, where he remained for 22 years. He loved the job and the school and said that was blessed, he was blessed with excellent staff and some outstanding students. He owed a particular debt to Alex Madrill for his strong and unswerving support. Even long after he retired, he still relived the joy and despair of results day and the relief of finding places for pupils who had just missed out on their target grades. We know from feedback over the years, and particularly since Dad passed away, how grateful those pupils were to him. Dad was also particularly proud of the school's dramatic and musical events and their sporting performances. He retired in 1998 and was awarded the OBE for services to education an award which was very well deserved and which he and we were very proud of. He became the administration officer at Port St. Mary RNLI and thoroughly enjoyed his time there, particularly the preparations for and running of Lifeboat Day. Mum and Dad's retirement years, however, sadly didn't go the way they'd hoped. Mum became ill with a rapidly deteriorating condition and Dad spent increasing amounts of time and energy supporting and caring for her at home, seamlessly picking up all the domestic duties as mum's abilities slipped away, including, apparently, learning how to cook to a surprisingly high standard given his famous complete lack of ability in this area. Dad's love and devotion was such that he looked after mum at home long after the point where many would have given up. And when he, she moved to Abbotswood for her final years, he supported her there daily and helped enthusiastically with social and fundraising activities for home. Mum finally died in, in early 2012, and we feared for how Dad would react after such a long and devoted marriage. 
It did take him some time to recover his purpose in life, but he did so big time. Getting together with Joy was a surprise for him, but gave him a new lease of life, and they were married in 2015. We were all delighted that Dad and Joy were able to make each other so happy, and that they enjoyed traveling around the UK and Europe together for several years, until the COVID outbreak put a stop to what would have been their last trip together. It was such a shame that Dad's illness meant that their time together was shorter than we'd all hoped. Joy is fully part of our family, and always will be. Dad was always uh, thoroughly prepared for every eventuality, so uh, most of this eulogy has been based on a draft which he helpfully left for us. <laughs> <laughs> we, we amended it as we went along to add in some bits and, uh, and customise it. Um, but the final sections are entirely Dad's own words, um, entirely as he left them for us, on a, on a range of topics. So he said, I don't subscribe to a lot of modern educational thinking that treats people, pupils as statistics and teachers as means to meet dubious targets. Education is about individual pupils, giving them equality of value in an attempt to prepare them for a useful and successful life. Educational outcome is for their individual benefit. They are not all the same. All politicians went to school and most of them therefore feel that if every child is subjected to the same reg regime as they were, all will be well and we will beat Singapore 10 nil in an every maths contest. Here I go again, he said, on my high horse, even when I've hit the happy hunting grounds. Changing the subject completely, Oldham Athletic have been the sporting joy and bane of my life. <laughs> Despite affinities with both Manchester clubs, I am bound by the memories of walking to Boundary Park as a boy and of many coach trips to away games. Their rise to the premiership was exhilarating. Yeah. It's odd that I should finish up living in Port St. Mary, having spent so many hours fishing off the back of the Carrick and quenching a thirst in the Albert. I'm not sure which was the greater, time-wise. I never regretted coming to live in the island. I hope I managed a few positives for its people. It certainly gave me a lot to be grateful for. And then he closed by saying, if possible, I would like my ashes scattered in the sea off Port St. Mary. If Alex is involved, remind him that it is less messy if I go downwind. nice to know that as a politician it's never too late for a lecture so. <laughs> it's a great honour uh, to be asked to say a few words on behalf of former pupils at Castle Russian High School so many pupils have gone on to great things as a result of Mr Tavner to glittering careers in higher education at Oxford and Cambridge to the pinnacles of commerce and the arts however as has been said to Harry Tavner teaching was not just about results and grades but about ensuring each student made the best of themselves, to inspire them to be better and to fulfil fulfill the school's motto, Liat Mir Tolu, to each as they deserve. Mr T, as he was always affectionately known to many in school, although never to his face, served as headmaster from 1976 to 1998. He had a reputation for being firm but fair. And I say that as one of the many hundreds who have spent time outside of his office contemplating their fate and receiving the right measures of admonition and encouragement inside. For Mr Tavner's skill was to get through the thickest of skins, the most inflated of egos and the most fragile of souls to make them more aware of themselves, more conscious of their ability and potential and to leave them confident in their ability to do better. These traits also served him well with the staff and I can see so many of them here today. Almost every teacher from that era that I can recall has taken to Facebook in the last few weeks to pay tribute in their own way. He was always a great support to me, and I remember knocking on the door in 2011, full of trepidation for how my former headmaster was going to judge my move into Manx politics. And his response was that he hoped I'd do well, and added, you've got a good brain, and I'm glad you found an argument, glad you found a good use for your argumentative streak. 
A fine compliment indeed, but I'm sure everyone who passed through the doors of Castle Wushan will have similar stories from their time at school and afterwards. Words cannot truly express the affection felt for Mr Tavner by staff and students alike, but everyone who was at Castle Wushan in 1998 at his last assembly will have felt it. After some well-chosen words, the staff and pupils erupted into applause and into a standing ovation that echoed through the hall and down the corridors for what seemed like ages. It was truly felt and richly deserved. A generation of pupils at Castle Wushan High School are grateful for his service. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. <coughs> Fear no more the heat of the sun nor the furious winter's rages. But thou thy worldly task hast done, O marked gone and tamed by wages. Golden lads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers come to dust. Fear no more the frown of the great, thou art past the tyrant's stroke. Care no more to clothe and eat, to be the reed as adds the oak. The scepter, learning, critic, must, all follow this and come to dust. Fear no more the lightning, the lightning flash, nor the all dreaded thunderstone. Fear not slander, censure rash, thou hast finished joy and moan. All lovers young, all lovers must, consign to thee and come to dust. No exorciser harm thee, nor, nor no witchcraft charm thee. G ghosts unlaid forbear thee, nothing ill come near thee. Quiet consummation have, and renowned be thy grave. Thank you, Jake and Nerissa, for those two readings from the past, well-rooted in history. Each of those readings help us in our reflection today, and we have plenty to reflect on, don't we? The first reading, uh, the one that Jake brought to us from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, tells us that there is a time for everything. A time for everything written several thousand years ago, traditionally by King Solomon, but they seem so appropriate for us today. For everything there is a season, a time to live, and a time to die. In other words, how fragile life is. One of life's most important questions is, what time is it? Our lives are governed by time. We look at our watches, our, clack, our clocks, we look at the calendar to see what date it is, what month it is, and so on and so forth. We know the seasons of spring and summer and autumn and winter. But perhaps time should be measured in more than hours or days or years. We've already mentioned some important dates and times in our service today. We know the date of the 25th of May, 1938, the date that Harry was born. We know the date that he died, the 6th of October, 2021. So we know that Harry lived for 83 years, 
Yes, we have a measurement of time. But perhaps our lives should be measured rather than by time, by relationships, the relationships we have with others. And we've already heard about some of those relationships in the service. That's why we're here today. We're here because we knew Harry. You are family, you are friends, and you've come to say goodbye to someone you knew. But what time is it for you today? What is the appropriate time? This wise person who penned these words in the Old Testament, we don't know very much about them. We don't know whether it was a man or a woman. It could have been either. As I say, traditionally, King Solomon. The word Ecclesiastes is not a name of a person. It's more a title or a nickname. It can mean the preacher, or more accurately, perhaps, the one who spoke in the assembly. A bit like Mr. Speaker, perhaps, but not quite like that. There is a time. There is a season for every event under heaven. A time to weep and a time to mourn. I'd like us to think just for a few moments that today might be a time of mourning, it might be a time of remembering, and it might be a time of comfort, and I hope that it will be. A time of mourning for Harry's family and his friends. You have lost a loved one, and it hurts. It doesn't do to deny our feelings. We can grieve long, we can grieve fully. Because when we grieve, healing takes place. We don't suppress our grief. Today is a time of mourning. Of course it is. It's also a time of remembering. And Harry's three sons have given us much to remember today. Funerals are bittersweet occasions, aren't they? Bitter because you've lost a loved one. Sweet because you have so many memories to share. And thank God that he's given us the capacity to remember. One date stands out very much in my memory. And that date was the 26th of August in the year 2015, just over six years ago, when my cousin asked me to perform a little duty. Joy is my cousin, one of my first cousins. She asked me to conduct the marriage ceremony of Harry and herself. And I was delighted, honored, privileged to do that. Sue and I had met Harry uh, a year or two or a little more before that, and we liked him very much. We found that he was kind, he was caring, and he was humorous. At that wedding, we met many of Harry's family too. And again, we realized that they were very special people. So today, we can think of the good times, the good times like that wedding six years ago, that you have all got memories that you've brought with you today, which go back a lot further than the memories that I have of Harry. And we're thankful for those memories. We think of the good times, the funny times, the experiences, yes, and the bad times too. And in your remembering, you'll celebrate Harry's life. Sue and I were privileged on a few occasions uh, after Harry and Joy were married to stay with them in their home at Port St. Mary. And that was a de delightful experience. And we loved to hear Harry's stories. Many of them were very humorous stories, Sto not made up stories, but stories of life, things that had really happened in the family or at school. They made us laugh. Some of those stories I wouldn't feel appropriate to share with you today, but never mind. You perhaps know some of them already. A very special person was Harry. And we rejoice in the memories that we share today. A time of mourning, a time of remembering, a time of comfort. 
Comfort in the original sense of the word, of course, comforte with strength. We can gain strength from sharing these things that we share today as we support and strengthen each other. I know that Joy appreciates very much the strength that she has received through the, the friendship, the companionship, the encouragement, the practical help of Harry's boys, as she calls them, the boys, Harry's sons. Joy is grateful uh, for that, I'm sure. Comfort, strength, comes from all sorts of angles, doesn't it? Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I will return and take you with me if you believe in me. Yes, even in the midst of death, Jesus, we will find, will never leave us or forsake us. That's encouraging news. He faced death himself, and he changed it. He conquered it. He'll never leave us. That's the Easter message, the message of the empty tomb. The gospel is that if we believe in Jesus, we too will be raised. That's a comforting, strengthening thought. I don't think Harry ever claimed to be a committed Christian, but he did cling to Christian values. He was a good man, and in a few moments we're going to commend Harry to the care of a loving God, to our maker and Harry's maker. But before that, a few words of thanks that I'd like to pass on from joy uh, to you. Firstly, to the Reverend Chris Belfield, a very faithful minister and pastor who's been a great strength in visiting Harry in, in the good times and the bad times and for the support that he's given to Joy. Joy also appreciates, as I've already mentioned, the companionship and support of Harry's sons and their families. She appreciates the hospice and the wonderful care that they gave to Harry and which they also give to all those who pass through their doors. Thanks to Sean sharing the service with me uh, this afternoon, to Mike and Brisha, to Mr. Speaker, and to those who, who've read, to all of you for coming here today and showing your love, your friendship, your support for Harry and for, for Joy. A time of, of mourning, yes, a time of remembering and a time of comfort and of strength. Let's just have a moment of silence now as we gather our thoughts together. God of mercy, Lord of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give you thanks for Harry, for the grace and mercy he received from you, for all that was good in his life, and for the memories that we treasure today, those memories that have been shared with us and those that each one has brought. You promised eternal life to those who believe. Remember for good this your child Harry, as we also remember him. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom, where sins have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord, your mighty power brings joy out of grief and life out of death. Look in love and mercy now on all those who mourn. We think especially of Joy and of Harry's sons and their families. Give them patient faith in times of darkness. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. You are tender towards your children and your mercy is over all your works. Heal the memories of hurt and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use aright the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ, to follow in his steps 
in the way that leads to everlasting life. So, God of love and mercy, and trusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now you are invited to join in the singing of the old Manx song, Ellen Bannon, Isle of Man, a, t a place which became very dear to Harry, his adopted home. As we remain standing, let us commend Harry to the love and mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Maker and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Harry to your mercy. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive, and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. We have entrusted our brother Harry to God's love and mercy, and we now commit his body to be cremated, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God give you 
his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.